practice, but we'll see in the future. All right. I think I am live on Facebook Live. Hello, Facebook. All right. How is everybody? I want to know where you're dialing from. If you're live with me, awesome. If you're watching this on replay, uh, comment as well where you're watching from. All right. We'll get this going momentarily. I think I've got the right camera in. I've got the mic in. And Bo, if you could let me know that this is all going kosher on Facebook, that would be helpful as well. So today, uh, we'll talk about creating high-value offers, turning what it is that you do into high-value offers. All right, Adam Urbanski here, also known as the Millionaire Marketing Mentor. And if this is scrolling through your newsfeed and you can't hear me, then stop and turn up your volume. All right. Did I do that in the first seven seconds of Facebook Live just to catch everybody's attention? Hopefully. Listen, I would appreciate your uh, likes, comments. Bo says Facebook is good. Likes, comments. I want to know, hello, where are you dialing from? And um, once again, even if you're catching the replay, do this because I always come back, read through the comments and interact. Plus, this is going to be one of my better trainings. Now, they all... All my, um, in my humble opinion, all my trainings are phenomenal, but this is going to be one of the most phenomenal trainings. So uh, it would be awesome if more people got to see this, all right? So uh, if you can hit those like buttons, those heart buttons, and give me comments, supposedly that tells Facebook that I am saying something smart that other people should be paying attention to, and they give it wider distribution. Go figure, all right? So don't be bashful with those like and heart buttons and uh, so on and so on. My computer says I need to re re renew my Robo form. Anyway, listen, how to create, how to turn what it is that you do into high-end offers. Really near and dear to my heart right now, and you will see why in just a moment. All right, let me lubricate my vocal cords. As always, I've got nearly two pages of notes for this. Really good stuff. And this is near and dear to my heart because uh, for the last year and a half, I've been on this kick that I called results revolution. And I, as you will see, this isn't just relevant to me and kind of something I concocted in my head. This is something I believe that if more people don't get on fairly quickly, uh, they will have really, they will be left behind, bottom line, all right? So... Uh, one thing I want to share with you that today is really about creating what I call your unique service solution or unique uh, service package, your USP or USS, uh, not necessarily translating that into an offer. So today we talk about building your engine, uh, not necessarily about building your marketing materials for that engine. I did a program back in September. In fact, I checked before I went live. That video is still here in Fastest Path to Cash Group. You can look it up. And I did a program back then, and it was called something like how to create offers so irresistible that they nearly sell themselves. And I went through this whole thing of, you know, selling the transformation or not transaction, um, you know, naming things in a sexy way, the, 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 the surfacey stuff, right? Today, I want to get into the nitty gritty, how to actually take what it is that you do and Turn it into a unique service solution and to a unique process that um, allows you to do a number of things. Number one, it allows you to confidently promote yourself because you know you've got a solid vehicle in place. You've got a toolbox that consistently delivers results, which is number two, allows you to predictably, consistently knock it out of the park when you work with clients. Number three, it actually allows you to uh, continuously not only improve your work, improve your results, but also drive down the amount of time, energy, and effort that goes into working with clients. So it's one of those things where results go up, the amount of effort you put in goes down, right? Because again, you're building a predictable machine and you get to improve it with time rather than reinventing the wheel. And finally, the last part, it's very important. This is why... Actually, when I saw this topic, I'm like, you know what? I didn't expect it, but I might as well teach on it because it's very, very uh, timely, very fresh for me because in my business, I'm distancing myself from actually being the coach, being the guy who always deliver. And instead, I want to be the chief thinking officer and a chief traveling officer. By the way, 
both have both happen to be CTO, so I guess it's going to work out quite nicely for me. And uh, I also want to be a chief inspirational officer. I don't want to be the chief coach. But in order to do this, in order to grow my business and scale it, yes, I'm using the word scale, and in order for you to be able to predictably deliver the results and then scale it, um, you must have systems in place, right? The other day I asked a question in a group, not this one, but somewhere else, you know, how do you scale about something about scaling and man, lots of people came out of the woods and oh, I can do this and I can do this and go and see this expert and somebody humbly bragged like, oh, you know, we only take a hundred clients a month because, you know, we don't want to, you know, we want, we really care about the results. And uh, meanwhile, in the last five months, then share five success stories. I'm like, well, this is really amazing. You know, I only take 20 clients a month, but out of those 20, uh, 18 get uh, get to pay for what they invested with us within the first two weeks. So, you know, screw you with your 100 a month and then you screw your clients. So it's easy to scale a business. You just throw more money at marketing and and uh, automate your sales. It's, it's very easy. It's very difficult to scale a coaching business that continuously delivers results. So another thing I want to show you, I've been studying a lot about or looking up a lot and thinking a lot about where coaching is in the industry is going. Coaching, consulting, I'm kind of commingling the two. And what I want to share with you is, is exciting and scary at the same time. So uh, it's exciting for me and, and scary for other people that don't see this. So what's exciting is that there is no doom and gloom in the coaching industry, all right? So if you're thinking you missed that wagon, you got to be coached too late, or you know everybody's doing what you were doing, there's no room in the market, Rest assured that we've got, for the next foreseeable future, probably at least another decade and beyond, uh, actually more than a decade, this is, you, 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 this is a very secure business because um, the amount of interruption, disruption that's happening worldwide in all sorts of uh, industries is creating so much, so much turmoil and confusion that there is a huge need for guides, people that can help people think through and find themselves and uh, get on a new path and get new results. Speaking of which, this is the terrifying part for most people, the results. There is a huge shift today where I, I first noticed that in business, I see it in executive coaching. I think it's going to make its way into life coaching as well where people don't want to go through your process. They don't sign up for being coached by you as they would sign up for a college course. They don't want, want a bunch of fucking information that just makes them study and memorize shit. They want results. If they want information, they can buy a course, they can read a book, they can watch a video online. They hire a coach because they need to internalize things and they need to be able to take action faster, more precisely, and get results quicker. So people that want to be just, you know, oh, I'm just, I'm a coach. It's like I, I align, I, I, you know, elevate, I whatever. You, 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 you'll be screwed. You must develop an area of expertise, which brings me to the last little preamble here that obviously in order to deploy what I'm about to share with you is you must talk your walk. Right, you must talk your walk, meaning you must preach what you practice, meaning you must be actually coaching people on stuff you have done yourself. And I know that you know, if you really got into definitions of what coaching, consulting, mentoring, training is, then essentially you don't have to, you, you would not have to be there or have done it yourself to be a coach. It is possible, however, you must. You must structure your coaching around an area of expertise in order, if you, if you want to sell high value services, high value offers, you must structure what you do around an area of proven expertise. And let me speak to that just a little bit. Earlier today, I coached a client who is just an amazing human being. I think she is the world's best branding authority. And, uh, but she herself does not yet have a seven figure business. Yet, ideal clients for her are actually people that are either very high multiple six figures or seven figure business. And we briefly danced around this thing that, you know, the confidence, the idea, well, how can I help someone who's got a seven figure business? I'm not a seven figure 
um, you know, coach. A, 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 I don't have a seven-figure business yet, right? And I'm like, you're not coaching them on building a seven-figure business. You're coaching them. You're taking them through your area of expertise of harnessing their it factor into a just magnetic world-class brand, right? And she's worked with high-class, world-class brands and companies worldwide. How could, how, could, how could she have worked with those brands which she had herself did not build that big of a company yet, right? She, she was not being hired to help them build more millions in processes and structures and whatever. And for her business brilliance, she was hired for the branding brilliance. And that's the area where she can talk her walk, right? She has done this. That's the area of expertise. All right. Let's see. Um, I talked about shifts. Actually, one last thing I want to share with you. I see 99% of all coaching, and I never articulated this. By the way, if you like, if you're enjoying this, I'd love to get some comments from you. Um, hit that like button. That's for sure. And I don't know what's going on here. Let me see if I can. All right. So Lisa is here. Awesome. 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 Good to see you here, Lisa. So look. Um, I believe 99% of coaching is done the wrong way. And the reason for it is because most training is rooted in faulty models that served us back when. It's just like the you know, entire schooling model is completely screwed up, right? So coaching is largely based on academic models. Most original coaches, at least modern, in the modern era of coaching, came out of highly academic environments. So there were PhDs, MBAs. So they were like, learn, 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 study, 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 test, test, test. Now I've got a title, all right? That does not quite cut it anymore in today's results-based uh, economy. Second, uh, uh, foundation for today's coaching structure is therapist businesses. Same thing. Meet for an hour a week. Yap, 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 yap. Tell me about a childhood. Okay, get the fuck out of here. Come back next week. We'll work some more. All right, your, your time is up. Blah, 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 blah. There's no progress built in. It's like it's all... So you, you mash those two. Um, lear, learning-based modality based on academia and, you know, cyclic structured every week, yap, 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 you know, explore the past, talk about it, and, you know, and meanwhile, take no action. Explore the problem, explore the problem, explore the problem. You know, the client, it, it's got to come out of the client. Those are all faulty models, all right? So in order for you to take what it is that you do and turn it into a high-value offer, you must create a three-legged structure, a three-legged structure. I'm going to take you through all three legs. This is exactly what I've done in my business. And just to kind of boast about some results, um, you know, we've made I've made some mistakes in my program. And I'm going to give you a bit of a bit of a story. Some of you may know it. About a year and a half, I blew up my my seven-figure coaching business because I realized it was not delivering results. We were generating sales, but I wasn't getting results for clients, not in the way that I wanted. And the way we restructured the program around those three three fundamentals, the three pillars of what it takes to create an effective program that essentially allows you to uh, eventually remove yourself from it is, um, anyway, so those, in order to do that, uh, man, I lost my train of thought. I need my tea. Um, all right, so I'll, I'll take you through those three pillars. But what we've built is now consistently delivering about 90%. And this is this was our version 1.0. And over the year, we have kind of did 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 1.6. We've just did a complete overhaul of the program and have a version 2.0, which I think is going to completely kick ass out of what we've done so far. All right. And again, it's because I finally, you know, I studied, studied, studied this whole structure and eventually got to the point where I can now articulate what actually makes it work. And this is what I want to share with you. All right. Long preamble, totally valuable if you grasp this. So three pillars. Number one, you must have what I call an implementation focused curriculum, an implementation focused curriculum. Right? Another way it would be to call it practice-based curriculum or results-focused curriculum. 
Meaning, unlike in academic world and unlike in much what's going on in courses and coaching today, um, my job is not to like show up and throw up and go like, whoa, here's everything I know on this topic. My job as I take people through my program is to help them take actions that get results. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to unpack this and translate this in just a moment. That's pillar number one, implementation-focused curriculum. That is fundamental. If you don't have a curriculum that you allow clients to bring in all the problems in, and then you can't find your way out of it, and you become overwhelmed, your coaching takes too long, uh, it's unfocused, you, uh, you end up exploring a lot of different, maybe even exciting angles with clients, but at the end of your engagement, they still have shit for results. You are not as satisfied because some of the things you were forced to do with them are not probably like within your scope of expertise. They had a good experience, but they didn't have like, holy shit, the earth shattering experience because of that, right? So that's because you didn't have implementation focused curriculum. The second pillar, this is fundamental, is client focused coaching. All right. So this is where you immediately see the shift from just pure coaching to you need to be an expert coach and you can only have implementation based curriculum if you actually have done this before. Otherwise, you have no idea where you, you have no idea what it takes to go from here to there. All right. You can you can have a great theory, but you essentially will be a blind leading a blind kind of. So you've got to have you've got to have walked that that path before. So second thing, uh, client focused coaching and versus uh, versus expert based coaching excuse me i'm going to walk you through this in a moment and a third thing is a uh, delivery platform delivery platform how are you actually going to deliver your coaching right so um this could be a this is very important do you deliver live do you deliver online do you deliver um you know on video on audio is it one-to-one -one, one too many uh, is it, you know, five years? Is it five weeks? Is it five minutes? Is it five hours? Length, frames, and so on. Is it audio? Is it video? Is it, is it PDFs? Is it exercises? Is it, you know, whatever. So delivery platform, that, that includes modalities, technologies, and so on. Uh, people get in love with this. And I think it's, it, while it's fun, it's important because you don't want the platform to distract from what you're doing with clients. You also don't need to make this your most important part of your work, all right? So far, oh, let's see. I, got, I think this is what's telling me. I got 29 hearts, 74 thumbs up. One, I brought somebody to tears, and I've got one winkly eye, all right? I think this is, this is not too shabby. Although, hey, Sue, good to see you here. Mary, all right, awesome. In terms of comments, you guys, Jesus. Hi, Alexa, I didn't call on you. Or Siri, or whatever her name is. Why is she turning on? Have you guys had this, like, you talk and your phone turns on on the set? All right. I think the people at Apple want to know my coaching secrets. All right, so let me walk you through this, right? So once again, the three pillars so far. Number one, uh, results fo oh, implementation-focused curriculum. Number two, client-focused coaching. Number three, delivery platform. All right. Let's unpack this a little bit. So... Implementation-based curriculum. One of the best things I have done in my business, all right, by far, is in mid-2016 when I had this existential coach crisis, realizing, oh, my God, I've got 7 billion hours of intellectual property. Uh, how, do I, how do I launch all of this every single year? Because, you know, I build, I build it. I need to leverage it, right? I need to leverage it this way. I need to leverage it. I need to make money on it. How do I do this? How, 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 how? And then I had this one critical, you know, fundamental insight. Like, why did I get into this business in the first place? And that is to help clients get results. And then I had to ask myself, is teaching them all this stuff that I know the fastest path to get them the results? And the most obvious answer was no. It's not, right? So I essentially blew up my entire thing. I said, what if I was starting from scratch and it just had to get clients results and I didn't have any of this intellectual property? Would I even worry about this? 
what would be needed to get my client from where they are to where they want to be, all right? So the first thing for turning what you do into an implementation results-based curriculum is you've got to start with asking yourself, what do my clients want? What do my clients want? And by the way, I'm going to end this with giving you about six questions. Yeah, six questions that will help you um, really flash out your curriculum, but that'll be the last thing. All right, so what do my clients want? The second thing that I needed to ask myself is in order for them to, in order for me to help them achieve that result, all right, what actions do they, do they have to take? This is critical. This is, by the way, goes into goal setting, why people fail at goals, because they focus on what I call, and I, I got this terminology from somewhere. I don't know where it originated. It's not mine, but I use it. Um, hey, Megan, and awesome for you to catch the replay later. It's going to be gold for you. Um, lag indicators versus lead indicators. So the simplest way I can illustrate this for you in my um, coaching People come because they want to make more money, right? So they say, I want to make a million dollars this year. Well, awesome. That is a lag indicator. The result of everything that you do will be a million dollars. But I don't know how to coach you to get a million. You know, it's like, how do you make a million dollars? So we need to figure out what are the activities that will lead to you to make that. So a lead indicator, for example, could be generate five leads, five solid leads a day. Or a lead indicator is have one sales conversation a day, all right? That's the lead indicator. So we know if you have one sales conversation a day based on your offers and the price points and so on, we can predictably uh, plan out that you're going to hit your million dollars a year in business. Ta-da, there we go. So now we just focus on the lead indicator. So again, what's the goal? What, what do my clients want? Number two, what do they have to do to get there? Now, number three is very important. What is the skill that, that I need to equip them with to help them take that action? What's the skill I have to equip them with to take that action? And then my questions are not what's all that all I know on this topic that I can teach them, right? Unless I'm teaching a, a trainer, trainer program, a facilitator. If I'm just teaching the client, then my job is not to make the client understand what I do. My job is to take the, to help the client take action that gets them the result. My job is not to teach them what I know. My job is to help them get the result. Get that? As a coach, as a consultant, you are not hired to teach people what you know. You are hired to help them get the result. If this is just like mind fucking blown insight for you right now, it should be. Because no one is talking about it in our industry. People create those massive monstrosities for courses teaching you shit and frames and, and none of it matters. At the end of the day, your clients aren't getting results. They now are ready to pass the test. They know what you know and they still don't have shit for our results, right? So that's why it needs to be results-focused, implementation-focused curriculum. What do they want to accomplish? What actions do they need to take to, to do this? And... This is important. And um, what skills do they need to learn or discover or master or acquire in order to take this action? In fact, you need to ask yourself four questions here. All right. So essentially what happens in this, um, in this modality is you ask yourself, all right, so client comes with this goal and I need to teach them a certain skill. Oh, and they need to take, so the client comes in and the client wants uh, this goal, right? I need to teach, and I need them, in order to have this goal, I need them to take this action. And in order to take this action, I need them to have this skill. That's it. And you just repeat this over and over until you get to the very beginning. This is the end result. What's the action? What's the skill? What's the action? What's the skill? What's the action? What's the skill? You reverse engineer. You you know, when you coach client, it's an inductive process. But when you figure out how to translate what it is that you do into an actual program, it's a deductive methodology, right? You need to start at the end and deduct or redact or whatever the hell is the terminology. I'm probably just confusing the words anyway. 
Don't pay attention to my labels. All right. So three questions that you for every step you're teaching the client in your process. You're going to ask yourself questions like, what do I need them to do? Or what do they need to do? Right? You don't, by the way, actually, let me reframe this. What do, you, what do they need to do? What action do they need to take? Because I don't need them to do anything. That's a very, it, I misspoke. I want to highlight this. This is very important. I don't need them to do shit. This is not about me. This is about them. So what do they need to do to get the result? Now, in order to take this action, what do they need to know? What do they need to know? And in order to take this action, how do they need to feel about that step and themselves? This should be like setting off whistles and bells in your head. Those three questions. Number one, what do they need to do? What do they need to know in order to do this? And how do they need to feel about themselves and the step they need to take? Because if they don't feel, if, this, if they haven't fully bought into the step, if they don't see why it's important, or they're lacking confidence, right? So if they feel crappy about the step, or if they don't have strong feelings about themselves, confident to take that action, they will not take that step. And if they don't take that step, they don't get the result. The whole machine fails, right? So... Part of your curriculum, part of your uh, results uh, or implementation focused curriculum, you need to be constantly, you need to be going through your steps, asking yourself things like, okay, uh, what do my clients really want, right? What do my clients really want? Uh, there needs to be some accountability built in. We actually have, you know, six different steps here. I, I, this will be too long to walk you through all of this. Uh, I'm just looking at a couple of things. Uh, you need to proactively think about what obstacles might show up for them. And you have to have um, obstacle removal uh, contingencies built into your program. All right. Part of your curriculum should be here's how to eliminate this problem. Now, look, this curriculum needs to help people. Um, actually, let me take it. OK, let me stop here. This is all about curriculum. All right. So. If you were to, to walk away with, with a couple of big things from, from this lesson, it's that um, you need to start with where people are, where people want to go and understand where they are at to start with and reverse engineer what are the actions they need to take to get there and what are the um, skills they need to possess in order to take those actions, right? So again, what do they need to do? What do they need to know to be able to do this? And how do they need to feel about themselves and the step and the action itself? All right. Now, next thing. By the way, I'm doing some of the shortcuts in here. This could be, you know, a half day workshop to like really unpack it with what I've created here in my program. Um, all right. Next part is the coaching part, right? So I mentioned earlier that what's important, and again, this is where I believe uh, most coaching programs fail and, uh, and um, in order for you to eventually free yourself from having to being a genius coach and being able to have other people support you in your methodologies, you must restructure your coaching to be client focused versus expert focused. All right. Here's the difference. And, and, and if you might, again, this is where content, your curriculum needs to support this entire framework because here's the difference. A client, an expert-based coaching methodology is all about me. Look how great I am. I'm going to tell you exactly what to do. I'm going to just map out all the steps. Uh, you're doing this wrong. Do it this way. This is more drill surgeon. By the way, I'm really good at this, Right. And I've gotten clients good results doing this. There's only one problem. There's only one me. The minute I remove myself out of that equation, my coaching fails. So in order for my coaching to continually succeed without me having to coach, I must remove my expertise-based coaching and replace it with client-focused or client-based coaching. So here's the difference. Client-based coaching is all about understanding the client. Who are you? 
What are your needs? Where are you trying to get to? What are the things that might get in the way? So for example, client comes to me and um, as an expert, expertise-based coaching, I could say things like, well, you know, here's what you need to do and here are the three issues you need to fix. Client-based coaching is more like, okay, so tell me about where you're trying to get to. You know, now in order to get there, what do you think are the steps that are missing? What are the, okay, have you thought about some steps? All right. Which of those steps do you want to focus on? Now, in order to take those steps effectively, um, what do you think you need to have in place? And what would be your first action in order to get in motion? All right. This is all, it's a look, I know it's, I'm simplifying this. It's not as if we don't give people anything. But your ideal clients, remember, they come for results and they likely already know what needs to be done for whatever reason they haven't taken the steps. And it's likely because they didn't have certain skill sets. This is where the curriculum comes in. You're teaching them how to do certain things, right? And they didn't have certain level of confidence. So look, your coaching that should be centered around your curriculum is designed to do four things. Four things that loop continuously around every step, every activity. Are you ready? Number one is clarity. This is a 4C foundation to your coaching. Number one is clarity. Your job is to continuously help your clients get clear on, stay clear on where they're going and get clear what's their uh, overall path to take there and what's the next action or the next three steps that need to be taken. That's it. If they're not, procrastination is caused by confusion, lack of clarity. If you help people get clear, that's already 99% of the battle that's won. All right. Second thing, your second C is equipping them with capability. So for example, one of in my program, I need to help people get clear on a vehicle which will take them to success. In my methodology, that's an offer. They need to have their own offer, right? Now, this is interesting because I have never taught what I'm teaching you right now to my clients. I've never taught this before. You know, you, you, <laughs> I'm divergenting myself from this knowledge here. Um, I teach people um, just basic setting up, setting up their, their unique solution system. Very, very, uh, very rudimentary compared to what I'm sharing with you. And also, I focus much more on, you know, how they will language this offer to the client. So that they have a unique angle. Do they know like the three things they're going to deliver consistently? I haven't broken it down to like an actual system. Now, mainly because most of the clients that come to me already have foundations of this in place. All right. But where am I going with it? So part of my curriculum based expertise, uh, implementation based curriculum is to teach them, okay, here's how you put your offer together. And now my job is to help them get clear that they have an offer, how, what it needs to look like. Number two, Give them the capability to put together an offer. So give them the, some basic tools so they can come up with the offer fairly quickly. All right. That's capability. That's the skills. All right. So clarity, where are you going? What do you need to do to get there? Capability. What do you need to know to be able to do this? Third C is confidence. This is huge. Your coaching, especially in the beginning stages with your clients, is all about building their confidence, cheering them on. Now, some of you are in our RRI programs, especially those who are in the 2.0 version, like the latest group. Um, I'm giving you a little bit behind the scenes. You probably noticed that we are cheering the shit out of you for every, like if you just, if you made a post in the groups, like, yeah, oh my God, you made a post. You're so awesome. Because look, the reason you don't have the results you want to have it's because you didn't take the action that needed to be taken. The reason you didn't take this action is usually twofold. One, you didn't know what needed to be done and how to do it. But very, very importantly, you probably did not lack the proper confidence or motivation to do this. So we are doing two things. We're building your confidence and we are inspiring you, motivating you to do more of us. Because we know that those activities will lead to success. All right. So your job is to build people, help your clients just dramatically keep increasing their confidence. And I'll tell you why, because the fourth C is very important. So confidence is built based on small wins, right? Sometimes you may have to uh, throttle down your client's uh, 
um, speed or expectations in order for them to hit a win. Because if they hit a win, man, it feels awesome. And they want to feel more, right? If you're winning, adrenaline kicks in, you like how it feels, you want to do more of it. If you're losing, it's like, shit, I don't want to do this. This does not feel good, right? So your job through your coaching is to guide people through your implementation-based curriculum to start creating small wins, to start gaining confidence. Because now, clarity, capability, right? So knowing where you want to go, knowing how to get there, confidence to implement, to take winning actions, contribute to the fourth C, which is um, capacity. Capacity. I talk about it a lot, uh, like internally with, with my team, because if you have a capacity, so in our business, you know, we help people charge more, right? If you have a capacity to ask for $2,000 and receive it, but you don't have a capacity to create $25,000 sale, setting you up for a $25,000 sale is setting you up to fail. You don't have the capacity yet, right? So we have to start with clarity, capability, confidence, loop that cycle for small wins until we start building your capacity for bigger and bigger offers. There is a reason why I start with people with you know, $3,000, $5,000, $7,000 offers. Most people's comfort zone, most people's capacity to receive is somewhere around that price point. Anywhere higher, it's going to trip all sorts of triggers and, uh, and start creating self-sabotaging behaviors. That is my, that is my client-based coaching, all right? Or I should say, I should say implementation curriculum based, but client focused coaching. I don't need people to do anything. It's not about me. It's not about how much I know. In fact, you know, I could get on a coaching call and talk for two hours just to coach one client, but on purpose, I need to shut up and withhold information because it's not about information. It's about implementation. Remember, it's results, right? So that's it. Final thing is... Uh, about technology, about platform. You know, I'm going to spend the least amount of time here because there's so much stuff on platforms, right? Uh, I'll tell you what we've done in our business that's been a tremendous blessing. And um, to this day, we still have a pretty healthy monthly subscription bill for all sorts of things. Like we have an annual learning platform technology. We have obviously our Infusionsoft. Um, I, I even forget what the hell we, I mean, so we've got like platforms up to wazoo and some of them we use to a degree, but I largely shifted my methodology in terms of the platform delivery. Uh, so my technology, I should say to Facebook, we run our entire program through Facebook group and things like Google drive. They're very Google drive costs us a little bit. Um, cause we have like a corporate version. I forget what it is. It's like ridiculously cheap, right? Facebook costs zero money. I realize it's not an ultimate solution because I'm building on a borrowed land. I totally get that. But meanwhile, it works perfectly. It's worked perfectly for a year and a half. And I don't think it's going anywhere for at least another two or three years. Facebook is not going to take that functionality away. And it, replace, it eliminates all sorts of headaches. There is no lost passwords. There is no, where is my login? Where is no, uh, where is the, what's the URL for the, for the membership site? All of that it, it is gone. There is no, like, how do I protect my content? If it's there, you can't take it out. You know, Facebook makes it obnoxiously difficult to download videos. Not impossible, but obnoxiously difficult. There is no need for my clients to download anything because they have lifetime membership into this, right? And most of the time, once they go through it, there's no need to like study over and over and over. Anything that needs to be studied, we keep it separately in platforms that we have more control over uh, versus like Facebook, all right? Again, technology, very, very simple. What do you want to ask yourself? Do I deliver one-to-one, -one, one too many? So while I, one last comment on this, on a delivery platform, is that I, I highly believe you must work with clients one-on-one -on -one and in small groups in order to perfect this entire process. Because I can guarantee you the curriculum you're gonna come up with to start with is gonna be total crap. Because your clients don't need what you think they need. And unless you stay client, um, and unless you just insist like, well, I'm an expert, go do this. If you truly wanna help your clients, you need to stay in tune with what's going on, what trips them up, um, you know, what needs to be reinvented every time they take a step. When they take a step and they can't take the step, 
you need to ask yourself, okay, where am I failing them? What do I need to put in place in order for them to be competent to take the step? Something is broken. What do I need to do differently, right? So it's not easy to do. It's not easy to do because guys, you can't just point fingers. So, well, you know, these guys are not doing the work. Yeah, that's part of it, right? There's always 200% to that equation, but you've got to ask yourself, what do I need to do differently? All right, so let me um, wrap this up and then I'm going to give you six questions to stay focused on. So what I talked about from this very beginning is that you must have a unique service package or unique solution system that allows you to consistently, repeatedly take people through your unique process to get them from where they are to deliver certain results. I talked about the fact that it needs to be results focused versus learning focused. And I talked about the fact that all this learning and most of the methodologies that you've been taught about creating programs today are based in academic worlds and uh, you know therapy business, which are models that worked then, they no longer work today, all right? Your clients demand different deliverables, different results. And I also talked about the fact that if you don't have this in place, not only are you doing your clients a huge disservice by essentially playing a Russian roulette. Will it work? Will it not? Well, I don't know. It works with one client, doesn't work with another. I can't figure out why. Because you have no methodology that you can track and modify, right? And number two, you're doing yourself a disservice because you can't confidently promote yourself if you kind of go like, well, my method worked once and then it didn't work 10 times and then it worked again once. It's like, there's no, it can be, you know, I am so um, assertive in my promotions and in my selling because I know that for the right client, I am 99.9999999% certain that I can help them knock it out of the park, right? So that's the, the setup. The entire process of turning what you do into a winning system is based on three pillars. Pillar number one, uh, implementation focused curriculum or results based focused curriculum right number two client focused coaching and number three delivery platform all right the first two are most important the third one should be pretty much it should be there to facilitate the delivery but it should feel invisible right it's there but it's not there right don't make it about a platform it's not it's about your training methodology, your implementation-based curriculum, and it's about your coaching that inspires clarity, teaches that, that gives people clarity, builds the capability, uh, inspires the confidence, and increases their capacity for receiving. All right, last thing, six questions you want to ask yourself. Number one, what do my clients want to accomplish? What do my clients want to accomplish? Number two, what actions do they need to take in order to hit that goal? Number three, what skills do they need to learn in order to take those actions? What skills do they need to learn in order to take those actions? All right, so number one, what goal do they want to accomplish? Number two, what actions do they need to take? Number three, what skills do they need to master? Number four, What's the progression or what's the sequence of an action and skill in order to hit the goal? All right. What's the progression or what's the sequence? Because it's more than one action and it's more than one skill. But if you do it in the wrong sequence, you're just going to screw with people's heads and overwhelm them. Again, sounds familiar. This is what most courses and, and coaching does today. It throws up so much information on people. It's designed to make people feel inferior so that they can go and hire you know, people for you know, bigger coaching programs where they still don't get results because they still feel inferior. Oh my God, I can't do this. Of course you can't do this. You were never given the tools to do this. The program was not designed to help you do this. This program was designed to get money out of you and keep you stuck and keep coming by buying more, all right? Essentially, very few programs are focused, are built the way I'm telling you to build yours. And I promise you, if you build it this way and when you learn how to market and sell it, which this is for another topic, you're going to crush it because people will be raving about you. All right. So that was number four. What's the progression? What's the sequence of actions and skills that you need to help people um, take and, and uh, master? Number five, how can I turn this into a curriculum? Duh. How can I turn this into a curriculum? All right. So one of the simplest things that I've done for the longest time is 
when a person comes in and they ask me to teach them how do I do something, I simply say, look, let me give you like the basics here for three minutes, but give me a day, give me two, give me three days, and I will give you a 15, 20 minute training on this. I'll sit in front of my computer, I'll do like, do that my, you know, turn my camera on, I put five or 10 slides together, and I record a short tutorial. Here's how you do X, Y, Z. And now I stash this tutorial either in a secret Facebook, fo- uh, uh, could be in a secret Facebook group, could be in an unlisted uh, YouTube video, or simply get yourself a Google Drive and just drop it in the Google Drive. So you have all those, all those trainings uh, in there. Or they ask how to do something, and you go and type in a few, a few words, take a few screenshots, drop it in the documents, go, here's how you do X, Y, Z. And before you know it, you start having here's how to do for everything. Right, and it's not about here's what you, here's my theory of the universe. Like, who gives a fuzzy red stale? All right, tell me how I here's where I am, here's where I want to be. Tell me how to get there in the fastest path. Okay, here's what you do, here's what you do next, here's how to take that step. All right, you keep creating little, I call them training vignettes. All right, and finally, so this is question number five how do I turn what I do into a curriculum? Question number six how can it be best delivered? How can it be best delivered? All right, so this is again, is it the one day workshop? Is it a seminar? Is it delivered just by you? Is it delivered by experts? Is it delivered in person? Is it delivered online? Is it delivered via audio? Is it delivered via video? Is it delivered via PDF documentation? How can it be best delivered? Now, I wanna highlight one thing about question number six. Notice the question is not, how can I best deliver it? The question is, how can it be best delivered? Because when you start thinking about how can it be best delivered, it starts to remove you from the equation. It essentially starts giving you permission to be to, to step into your you know your cheerleader role, your thought leader role, your content creator role, your um, your uh, your uh, influencer role, and less of you know less of a doer role, all right? But that needs to be intentional. It takes time to get there, all right? Last thing I'll show you, don't rush it. All right, here we go. Uh, 50 minutes out of my 45 intended, not too shabby. Uh, I, I appreciate all the comments and questions. If you had an aha out of this, whether you're watching live on replay, comment on this, please. Comment, like, do whatever you need to do. Let's help more people in the group watch this. This is what I've done in my business. This is a million dollar formula that, or I should say multi-million dollar formula for creating programs that actually work, that sell, that deliver results. Um, that's the fundamental psychology, the framework for it. I've just given it to you, right? Why? Because I think you need to turn your programs in, into something better than what it's been so far. And uh, your clients deserve it. And uh, you deserve to uh, be able to impact more people with less effort. And when you do it the way I just showed you, I just walked you through, you will enable, you enable yourself to do that. All right. I'm off the video for all of you who are in RRI programs and anywhere else. Uh, I will see you on a uh, web co- on a uh, bridge line for our coaching call. All right. Until then, later.